All right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today I just wanted to do a follow-up on the wood-burning pool heater. Uh, just kind of throw some numbers along with uh, the, the pool heater just to kind of let people know exactly how much it heats up the water. Um, so we're going to try to achieve two things here. Figure out exactly what the water flow rate is through the pool heater, how many gallons per minute or gallons per hour we're getting, um, and then how much it actually heats up the water um, from the pool temperature to what comes out of it. So then we can kind of get some idea of how many gallons of water we can heat per day or per hour um, to what temperature. Um, so I'm gonna try to do my best here to, to go through that and give an honest and accurate uh, measurement. Um, I have a dual probe thermometer here. It seems to be fairly accurate. Um, I'm gonna do a couple more tests with it just to make sure that we're getting accurate readings. And then I'll take you along with that process. So I've got a real good fire going in the wood burner. Um, this is pretty standard, uh, you know, burn that I have going in here usually throughout the day when I run it. Uh, I usually run it one or two days a week, just depending on how hot or cold it's been outside. In Michigan this year, we've had an absolutely horrible summer as far as heat goes. It's been very cool. In fact, today is probably one of the first days it's broken 80 degrees since June, and it's August now. So um, we've had to use it quite often, and it's been working really well. So first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and show you and, um, how we're measuring the flow rate of water through the pool heater. Uh, so I'll go ahead and take you over and do that now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna use a standard gallon milk jug and I've got my timer here. I don't know if you can see it or not. And I'll probably time lapse it just so you don't have to sit here and watch a milk jug fill up for a minute. But uh, basically I've got uh, a loop of my um, heater here and I'm plugging it off with my finger right now. Um, basically this is one of the loops that I have. This is actually the loop to the solar heater. Um, I have the water equally distributed between a solar heater and a wood burning pool heater. Um, I'm using the solar heater loop to test the flow of water just because it's easier to take off and also the water is extremely hot coming out of the wood burning heater right now and I don't want to burn myself. So um, we're just going to test the flow of water here and see how, uh, how much water we're getting through the heater. So I'll go ahead and start that now. All right, so it looks like about 51 seconds to get that filled up. Um, actually, water coming out of here is kind of warm now too from the solar here. But uh, so we're looking at about a gallon every 51 or 52 seconds here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and round that off just to make all of our addition easy and say, look, we're getting about a gallon per minute. Okay, so it's going to be pretty close to accurate, um, and the flow does vary a little bit too. So, so we're getting about one gallon per minute going through. Um, the wood burning pool heater and uh, now let's get some temperature readings on what the temperature is coming in and what it is coming out of the wood burning heater and just kind of see uh, how much water we can heat up how quickly here. Okay so what I have here is a dual probe thermometer set up. Um, it's got these two wire probes and uh, I've got a little screw tapped into my diverter on each of the sides. So on this side here, I've got my fresh incoming pool water. This goes down through the diverter. It measures the temperature of that uh, water here, which is our pool water temperature, which is about 79 or 80 degrees. That's coming out and going into our wood burning pool heater, coming back over here on this side, and then joining the water and going back to the pool. I've got that another probe screwed into the pipe here that measures the temperature of the water coming back into the pool there. So that gives me the, the incoming and outgoing temperature so we can get a difference here. Um, again, about 80 degrees is what we're measuring the pool temperature, and we'll go switch over to the probe number two here, number two here, measuring the, the heat coming back from the, the wood burning pool heater. About 112 degrees, 113 degrees is what we're getting there. Um, that gives us a difference of about 32 to 33 degrees. So that's what our pool, uh, wood burning pool heater is heating uh, our water. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay over the pool pump here. I do apologize. Um, about that but obviously I can't turn that off because we need that for the experiment so um, but what we're looking at here is one gallon per minute what we measured before here and it looks like about 30 to 33 degrees Fahrenheit uh, of heat so per gallon of water that we're pumping through so let's do some calculations here and just kind of figure out how long we have to run the pool heater to heat the pool 
um, different temperatures. So just kind of see what we need to, to run in here. Okay, so we've gone through kind of the water flow of the heater, um, how many gallons we're pushing through uh, the heater every minute, and we also covered how uh, you know how much we're heating that water through the heater from the pool uh, temperature going into the heater to the temperature coming out. So we're, we're at about a 33 degree split. That's uh, 33 degrees hotter after it comes out of the heater. Um, Originally we measured about 52 seconds it took to fill up a one gallon jug, which ends up being about 1.15 gallons per minute, or 69 gallons per hour. So every hour we're pushing about 69 gallons of water through the heater and heating it, that water 33 degrees. Um, of course that fluctuates, depends on how hot you run your fire and that kind of thing. Um, this is about a 15,000 gallon pool. It's a 32 by 16, it's a four foot deep. It's actually a little bit less than that. Um, when I built the pool, I added a little extra sand to the bottom, so it ends up being a little shorter than that. So it's probably less than that, but um, estimation it's about 15,000 gallons. So what that gives us is, if we were to run the, the heater for 54 hours straight, um, that would heat the pool eight degrees. So that would heat all the water eight degrees. Um, 27 hours would heat it about four degrees. And that's pretty close to what I've been seeing. Um, now, the first time I heated heated the pool up, I, I got about seven degrees in a 24 hour period um, is what I measured, but I was measuring with a more in inaccurate thermometer. So this is, should be a little bit more accurate. Um, so basically estimation, if you run the, the pool heater, fired up in the morning, let it run overnight, which is a lot of times what I do. Um, whenever I have to put pool chemicals in that, let, that require I run the pool filter for 24 or 48 hours, I'll just fire the pool heater up and run it for that long. So, um, and I just, you know, let it run overnight and then in the morning I come and, you know, throw some more logs in it and it'll burn overnight, you know, pretty well. So, um, so 24 hour period, you're getting about four degrees and uh, that's pretty sufficient. I mean, if you run this once a week, you know, if you ran it for 48 hours, you'd get about eight degrees out of it. Um, and you know that's that's a pretty sufficient heat up in the pool. Now you also have a solar cover usually, and I also have a solar heater, so I can actually heat the pool temperature up pretty quickly. Um, but the the pool heater, the wood burning pool heater, is the, the absolute by far quickest way to add heat to the pool. Um, so like we've had two weeks of cold weather, I'll let it run now for about 48 hours. I fired it up today. I'll let it run through tomorrow, and then maybe you know through tomorrow night also, and uh, the pool will be back up to you know to where I want it where I want it to be so um, but I hope that gives you some ideas if you're looking to build one of these or something similar now you could double the efficiency of this heater by adding a, a longer coil of copper in the top of it so I think I have I can't remember if it's 20 or 30 feet of copper in there but if I were to get a second coil in it essentially that would double the efficiency um, it would heat up you know heat the water up twice as much or, or pretty close to, to that so um, you could really get even more heat out of this heater um, by running more coils of, of copper through it so that's something I might add on next year but uh, it's working real well for us so far so hopefully this helped you out um, if you're building one of these again and uh, if you have questions or any comments or anything like that please let me know um, I'll post all the statistics that I took in the comment sec or in the description section um, throw any questions that you have or comments please in, in the section in the uh, comment section below hit thumbs up if, if you found the video informational um, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed we've got lots of other sustainable type projects pool stuff sustainable uh, um, gardening and, and uh, aquaponics and we've got the chickens and the chicken coop and things like that too so um, take a look at some of the other videos and subscribe if you want to follow along other than that thank you very much for watching and have a good one